Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona Real Estate Show. I am Little Ricky with uh, <laughs> Pat. What's my rate, McMasters, and the dynamic duo of Jackie and Ruby. I, I changed the photo up there. Uh, this way, I'm no longer the oldest person in the room. Oh, wait a minute. That just made me the oldest. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately. You know, no, no, I'm not. Be what it is, so I guess. <laughs> I'm not liking this. <laughs> well, you can send me a kindergarten picture, and I can... I can change that up next week. Okay. <laughs> I did just come across the baby picture a couple of days ago of me and oh my gosh, so cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, it uh I have one like that that picture there. I uh um I put it next to a, a gal, a good friend of mine, I put it together and made her a print. And uh um we were both in kindergarten together and I saw her when I was up in town last summer and we were out having breakfast and i said to the server i go have we changed she goes, oh are you guys brother and sister i go no no we're just classmates and good friends for 50 50 years yeah 50 no not quite 50 46 something like that so but anyway enough about that nonsense i thought i'd talk about um you know rates are obviously just you know to the moon and uh so i thought we'd start to see an immediate slowdown not at the it's interesting when i look at it i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that too because you know when we doubled when the rates went from you know three and a half to six and a half sales plummeted and um and prices started going down like a rock well now we've gone from maybe five and three quarters up to almost and some banks are at seven and i'm not seeing it and it's uh it's it's not done. Here's the listing success rate. Now, these two big spikes right here, these are just haul it. Remember the end of December, all the expired listings we had? That's what yeah. that looks like. But down here, um, this is the lowest we've been is a 61% listing success rate. These really don't count because it's between Christmas and New Year's. So, but we are now way up here highest we've been since 2022 when when things were crazy the listing success rate was around 92 percent and we don't want to get there again um but it's going down ever so slowly and then we look at listings under contract kind of the same thing slight little dip there not much nothing major then when i compare it to my seven day moving average went down and then I'm surprised we went up. So all of the kind of gut feeling that says um, things are going to get painfully slow. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. I had a listing I was going to show tomorrow. It's only been on for a couple of days. I think it was 500 and some odd thousand Chandler. Boom, under contract already. Um, so a little. Yeah, those are price. moving fast. Anything in that price point still moving fast. Yeah, it's amazing. And Pat, so I'm looking at this, today's rates, uh, only went up 0.1 by the end of the day, said it was trending positive down here. But um, what are you seeing in the charts? What am I seeing in the charts? I mean, today we had a decent day. Um, the 5.5 coupon was up 17 basis points. The U.S. 10-year uh, treasury was 392. It tipped up at 395. We were seeing at... Uh, the high 390s, but um, things overall, I mean, we're seeing some resistance here. We're probably going to see some resistance here short term. We got the PCE numbers coming off Friday. So, I mean, we've had a run up here since February 2nd. You know, usually when you see this run up, you know, for two, two and a half weeks, you're going to always see some type of a pause. You know, nothing goes straight up. Like, you know, obviously you go back the chart just where it starts here. I mean, we saw, um, um, this run up, we saw it back off, little run up, back off, run up. So, I mean, I, we're probably going to see some type of pause with the numbers. I mean, we had uh, the market trade up pretty well today. It was uh, a little bit all over the board, but we finished up 17 basis points. And um, it just seems like the Fed obviously is, you know, the market and the Fed are still at this, you know, this battle where the Feds are just going to keep the rates you know, they're, they're probably going to hike them quarter, quarter. Uh, I don't see anything from what I'm hearing 
that we're not going to see anything that's going to be off the board, like 50 basis points, but they're just going to keep the pedal to the floor for a while. But it's interesting that Barry Habib, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but um, he was talking about how um, the Fed is taking the jobs report for face value. And he says, if you really dig into the numbers based on these seasonal adjustments, um, there is really a loss of two and a half million jobs when the expectations were a loss of 300, 3 million jobs. So it looks like they gained a half a million jobs just on this adjustable uh, seasonal adjustment. And I guess there's some, they're playing around with the numbers and uh, he's saying that the fed is really kind of looking um, at the wrong numbers from an unemployment standpoint. And surprise, um, surprise. <laughs> and he feels as though there's more weakness, obviously, you know, all these job losses, you know, Microsoft and all these tech companies, he goes, where are they? You know, where are they in the numbers? So he sees some weakness, you know, in the next com coming months. And um, he, he says March, it was March 10th, March 14th, obviously, it's going to be some big days as far as the inflation numbers coming out. So, I mean, we're seeing a short term, I think we're going to see a short term ceiling here at it's going to be tough to break. If it breaks through four, you know, there's been a ceiling at right at 4%, 399, 398. So, you know, chances are we'll see a little short-term relief. But like right now, I said uh, our rates, you know, there's some retail banks that are 7 and 8, 7 and a quarter. I mean, you're looking at the high sixes. I mean, we're at mid 6 to 5, 8, 6 to 3 quarters. So, um, you know, it's it's amazing to me still I'm getting calls from people that they just seem unfazed by the rates now. They seem like more comfortable in the sixes. And um, it's bewildering to me because, like you said, we've seen these shocks go from three to six, six and a half. And, you know, back years ago, you know, if we saw three quarters of a point move, people were just putting the brakes on it. But now it's like people are kind of settled in. Like they seem okay with it. They're just readjusting oh, things. I was thinking about this a little bit today. Has the mix of who's out there looking right now changed versus before rates went up in other words did we have a lot of more first-time home buyers in the threes and now we don't no i'm still getting first-time home buyers um you know and i'm seeing a lot of first-time home buyers too we've got a good mix of both mm -hmm. yeah so just, the mix hasn't changed the the no. buyers that are out there for you hasn't changed right i, I, that I, I see. think i think what's happening just in my opinion is i think you know, people were so used to the two and threes. And then when we had the great increases suddenly, it was a shock. And I think now they've seen that potential that it can come back down. You know, we dipped to 599, even if it was only for a day. I think people are a little bit hopeful on that. And I almost feel like they're throwing in the towel, like saying, okay, I'm going to have to adjust what I'm looking for. You know, and we got rid of the 2022 prices, basically. We're back to, what, November or December of 21. So there's been a little bit of relief there. But I feel like people have, have just kind of settled in and gotten used to in the six range. Now, if we jacked up to seven and a half, I think, yeah, we'd probably come to a screeching halt. But yeah. I think if we stay here and muddle around this area, I think people have pretty much, you know, they don't want to sign leases again. Um, a, a lot of the clients we have are necessities, but I, I think people are just kind of settling in and they're used to it. And, you know, they're, they're, it's not such a shock anymore. It's kind of like a divorce. You know, you're shocked yeah. that uh, <laughs> somebody's, okay, we're going to get divorced. It's like, wow. And then you just kind of settle into like, okay, let's get the process going. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess, <laughs> uh, I guess we're there. So yeah. Yeah. You I had to bring listing, that up, didn't you? So, uh, <laughs> I think well, the listing success rate is is sellers are being a little bit more realistic. Yeah. <coughs> well, I think I'm with seeing... anything, I think I think real quickly. I mean, with anything, it just there's always that initial shock, and then I've over the years I've seen it takes two two to three or four months for things to settle out and people to realize, okay, this is our new reality now, and you know, you get that initial shock, and then you get people pulling back, and then people get settled in and it happens. I've seen it happen so many times over the years. Um, I can't put a dollar on it. Well, I've get a lot of comments um, on, and for some reason, people feel that investors are going to start dumping their inventory because equities 
gone down. And I, I, I thought I'd illustrate it with this one chart here with my red pen because, well, I'm the only one with a red pen. But um, <laughs> so this <laughs> show off. Yeah, I know it's fun. I this is this is where we are now. Investors have bought up here, bought at that rate. They've got good cash flow. And if they don't, if their rent has started to come down, which I'm sure it hasn't, um, they're still okay. And uh, But uh, look at the investors that bought pre-pandemic during this period right here. There's mm -hmm. no reason for them to bail. They're, mm -hmm. They've got a low interest rate. They're getting good cash flow. I mean, why would they sell? Why would they say, oh, this is bad, I'm getting out? And the reason people are saying that is they're misinterpreting the headlines. And the headlines say investor activity has plummeted. Well, they've stopped buying as much as they were. They're, they're not selling and leaving town. They're taking their money and going to another village, going to another state. So the headline makes it feel like investors are in trouble when they're not. They're hanging on to their cash. They're still picking up opportunities where they can, but they're not dumping things. And no. they had such low rates because they weren't paying two, three percent. Some of those investors were paying one and a half percent and buying in bulk. So, you know, think about it. Even if they have to reduce their rents, you know, because the rental market has come down some, they're still in the positives. So there's no reason to get rid of them. I think the only ones that we may see investors coming on the market is the mom and pop Airbnb that are like, I can't do this. I don't want to be a landlord. And some of those I think might come to the market, but I think a lot of those are going to be condos and townhomes. Yeah. And I don't think the Airbnbs are going to come on because they had a disappointing Super Bowl because no. not everybody had a disappointing Super Bowl. Just I think they're saturation. just going to come on because um, like anything else we have, we've reached a saturation point on them. There's too many. So they're going to come on for that reason. And to what you just said, boy, I'm tired of managing this stuff. And uh, I interviewed a guy. He's from St. George, Utah. He's down here in Arizona and he's he's got a new service he's starting. He's a real estate agent and he has this service where he helps like snowbirds, people that have a home here and then they're gone and he checks their houses, their filters, their drainage and everything. That's and, uh, you know, flushes the toilet, runs the sink water. But he was telling me about the unbelievable restrictions on Airbnbs in St. George, Utah, you have to have an on-site manager. Wow. And wow. so it, they just killed the Airbnb business up there. And so if people are going to dump Airbnbs, it's going to be out of fear of intense regulation. And mm -hmm. so far, Arizona hasn't raised that flag. But uh, um, so, Ruby, you read some news on Arizona or uh, Rio Verde Foothills water. Yeah, just this morning, um, they said on the news and that they have come to an agreement um, to start providing, Scottsdale's going to start providing water out to them again in Rio Verde until um, for three years, until they get their agreement um, put in place with, I believe you said it's Epcor water that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, they're out of Canada. Um, they they just reached an agreement in uh, Santan with Epcor Water because they took they took over from Johnson Water Company, and you guys have heard how well Johnson Water did, right? I mean, they were terrible. <laughs> it's like a, they no water pressure. With bills were astronomical. You know, people getting two hundred dollar a month water bills. Um, but Epcor reached an agreement to capture more wastewater so that they can treat it. And uh, um, so there was a 1,500 home development that was on hold. And some people had contracts on the houses and they weren't allowed to finish them until they inked this agreement. So they finally said, okay, you can occupy the houses now. Wow. And, man, those poor people. <laughs> yeah. What a mess. Couldn't imagine waiting like that. Mm -hmm. So, Jackie, going back to... Um, we're talking a little bit about the mix of buyers and sellers. Are you seeing more gravitation towards new build or resale, or is it still the same mix? I, I feel like it's kind of equal lately. 
um, we had a spurt, especially Ruby, where just because of all of the incentives, um, a lot of people were gravitating toward the new builds. For some reason, I'm not seeing big, I'm not getting as many emails. I don't know about you, Ruby. I'm not getting blasted every day. I'm getting updates on communities availability, but I'm not getting blasted with all these um, incentives like I was seeing a couple months ago. I'm still getting the emails. Um, I actually got a phone call from a gal at Taylor Morrison, not yesterday, but the day before. Mm -hmm. So I think it just depends on the builder and the community and, yeah. and actually the motivation of their agents out there. Yeah. Just building that connection with them and, and them getting out to us. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if I told you guys, I'm in North Peoria, uh, 75th Avenue and Joe Max, and I'm in a community called Alora Vita. And they have been blasting the mountains for the last, uh, I don't I want to say since last June. And they just put the signs up today for DR Horton, Shea, and Pulte. And those are going to be upper end. Um, they're right up against the mountain. But they're getting, they just put the sign for coming soon models. I think they're going to start around six, high sixes, low sevens. Um, and then they're also getting ready to open up Alora Vita South. So between the two of them, there's like 2,000 lots. Well, the um, Lennar um, building superintendent, we had a final walkthrough this week, and uh, he said he was on a call with their headquarters in Florida, and they told Arizona to get ready to ramp up by 20% next year. Really? Yeah, hmm. that's, that's pretty extensive. Right. Said, right, think right now we're selling at the pace that we expect to, despite mm -hmm. um, our friend who came out here and told everybody that everything right. was going to hell. But uh, they're selling at the rate that they expect to. And he he made a comment. He goes, "Hey, did you see that video by that guy?" I go, "Yeah." <laughs> and he goes, "You know, he goes, you can come by here at three o'clock. There's nobody here, and you can go look. Look at all these houses." And he goes, "Come by at nine o'clock." He goes, "Right." We're all, hammers are swinging. We're all busy. He said, I'd really like to know what time he was out there. Uh, oh, I'm he sure it was. He doesn't answer questions, though, does he? No, no. He just makes statements, comments. Um, you know, and they're going to, so 67th is going to get connected to the 303. They're going to um, extend that to connect to the 303. What's the big plant off I-17 again? The Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. Taiwan, so so this is going to be perfect. When they do that ramp, off 67 to the 303, it's going to be less than a 15 minute drive. So I think that's why this is happening. That's definitely where all the growth is. And then uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cromford had some numbers on our unemployment and how many jobs have showed up. And, and, uh, um, and we have had the lowest amount of new listings per month in, I think she said, I'll probably misquote, but I think it was 23 years. Wow. Um, which is, see if I can find it here, but it was, uh, uh, let's see. So uh, I can't find it, but it was uh, a, a staggering number. And that's what I'm seeing here too, is that new listings on a 70 mover average are now they're flat. You know, we came down, went up, you know, in December, but we came down after the holidays and we're just sitting there flat people. That's the thing that interest rates are affecting more right now than new contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interest rates gone up, make people stay put. People that oh, are in yeah. apartments and they're renting, they want to get out. And yeah. a lot of them, their leases are coming due because they made that decision last year. I'm not going to get into the bidding wars. I'm going to renew my lease. And I'm seeing a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. People saying, I'm, I'm going to get out. This is this is time. So it's it's a little disappointing that, you know, we have a little more time to look at a house and kind of think about it. But I've, you know, two weeks in a row now, I've I've had the rug pulled out from underneath me on a on a couple of listings. It's like you, you didn't see that coming. Yeah. I, I'm fearful if we drop down into the fives. I mean, you know, you hear so many people talking about how Phoenix is going to crash we have to have the supply to crash. We're not going to have the supply. I don't care what happens, even if all the Airbnbs do come on the market. It's just not going to happen with even with our demand down. So I, I'm I have my biggest concerns, not a crash, is what's going to happen if we have low inventory and 
we're down into the fives in interest rates. Well, Gary That's Keller going to be a problem. From, uh, Gary Keller from Keller Williams. He he said it's going to be a very tough year for real estate agents. He said uh, unless you really focus and change your model a little bit, but he said you will never see threes again in your lifetime. And he said, and that's doubtful you ever see fours. Yeah, we might see high fours, I think. But I, if we get in the fives, that's that's a great interest rate. Well, if we get in the fives and prices, prices right now, I, you know, we're gonna we're gonna switch right now. Listing prices have plateaued; they've actually gone up a little bit. But the first thing you'll see drop off will be um, concessions before you see any other adjustments in pricing, I think. Yeah. Um, I right agree. now the average concession is $9,800. Yeah. So that'll yep. go. So if but, rates get down to that high five, mid fives, I think those concessions will probably go away. Mm-hmm. Good People good won't be asking for buy down. So. Yeah. What bit of news on the FHA? Uh, no, don't know if you guys know us, but they just announced this, I think, yes, yeah, just the last 24 hours at uh, – FHA is going to cut their monthly premium uh, from 0.85 to 0.55, which I is going to drop on a, on a $350,000 house. They'll drop that monthly mortgage insurance from, um, well, the yearly from 2975 down to 1925 so about $1,000 a year. In uh, mm -hmm. So it comes out to probably about $85 to $90 a month um, in monthly mortgage insurance premiums that people don't have to pay. That's good news from them, finally. Yeah. <laughs> right. After all the other things that they've layered in. So, well, look, guys, thanks for the updates. We will be back again. Well, um, next week, I'm not sure. I'm going to be in Mexico, and I, we can try to record um, if I've got a decent connection, but I won't know until I get there. And, uh, and I just, I'm waiting to hear if, if the park is still there after the winds that they've had down there. <laughs> so, but if uh, we but we'll, do, if we do, I want to see you in a sombrero. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that may happen. <laughs> <laughs> and a, and a uh, margarita. How's that? So, yep. Sounds All right, good. Well, hang in there. Have a good week. Fantastic weekend. See ya. All right. Yeah. Bye.